Incoming! To help advance Manco weapons technology, the team is studying the trajectory of a decapitated robot head as it sails through the air. Notice that the point in space that the head occupies and the way in which it's rotated can be represented by six values. Position X, Y, and Z, and rotation X, rotation Y, and rotation Z. And when these values are plotted against time, they describe a curve. Sometimes, this curve is straight. A straight curve equates to constant motion. Sometimes the curve is, well, curvy, and this equates to motion that is accelerating or decelerating. And sometimes the curve is flat, equating to no motion at all. In Source Filmmaker, we can edit the value of these individual curves using the graph editor. By altering the shape of these curves, we can precisely change how an object moves through space. Fortunately, we won't have to adjust the value of every point in time. We can make most of these curves by supplying the graph editor with some key points, and then telling the graph editor how to draw the curve between these points. These points are called keys. Once we've defined a few keys, we can tell the graph editor how to draw a curve between them. This is called interpolation. There are several ways a curve can be interpolated, and they can all be defined by the quality of motion they produce. And we can also affect how the curve is drawn by changing the tangent of how a curve goes in and out of a key. So what does any of this have to do with pose-to-pose -pose animation? Well, with the graph editor, we can precisely control how motion goes in and out of a pose, controlling the qualities that create lifelike animation, such as how motion accelerates and decelerates. We can precisely plot a path through space. We can define overshooting motion by examining the curve trajectory and extending it. We can shape each individual axis separately, debugging problems as we go. We can key the position of a control and easily move that key in time and space. We can pin down the pose of an entire character and easily move that pose in time and space. And we can offset the keys to create overlapping motion. Controlling animation through the graph editor can take a bit of getting used to. To help us get familiar with working in the graph editor, Let's try this bouncing head exercise. It's essentially the scene from the beginning minus the flying head animation, which it'll be our task to animate. It's a lengthy tutorial, but by the end of it, we'll have a good grasp of all the tools necessary to create more complex motion and give the spy something a little more challenging to shoot at. So with that said, let's begin our tutorial. Go ahead and launch SFM. To open the session, click on the Open button at the bottom right of this window and locate the Tutorials folder. Go ahead and open it. Inside this folder are completed projects from all previous tutorials. The one we're looking for is called 13.3 pose to posedmx Select and open it. Wait a minute, where's the set? Currently most of the set is hidden with only the spy and the head visible. We'll make the rest of the set visible later, after we're happy with the head animation. We'll be mostly working from a side camera, much like the one we made in part two. A side camera will help us better see how the graph editor correlates with objects in the viewport. The first thing we'll want to do is display frame numbers instead of seconds. Frame numbers are a handy way to identify specific points in time. By default, SFM divides time into 24 frames per second, which is of course standard for cinema. To display frames, do the following. Whilst in the clip editor, right click on the top portion of the cursor and select time code display total frames. Now that we've done that, it's time to enter the graph editor. Do this by selecting the graph editor button just as in the motion editor time is represented across the top and bottom bar. And just like the motion editor, the bottom end of the playhead reframes the entire graph and the top end moves the playhead in time. 
Near the bottom of the playhead, there's a white number. This number represents the frame number the playhead is on and comes in pretty handy. It's also handy to know how to navigate around the graph editor. We'll need to be able to move all around the graph, zooming into small increments of time and zooming out to see the bigger picture. Let's practice a few helpful ways to get around it. First, let's try zooming in and out of the horizontal time axis by using the mouse scroll wheel. We can zoom in and out of the vertical value axis by holding down control and using the scroll wheel. And we can move around the graph by holding down alt and middle mouse dragging. We can also tell the graph editor to frame selected curves or keys. Framing curves will zoom the graph around so that the curves fill the graph editor, making it easy for us to see the shape of a curve and edit it. By default, the graph editor automatically frames selected curves or keys. Just for this exercise, we'll turn off. Click on the Automatically Frame Curve button so that it's no longer highlighted. Instead, we'll manually reframe the graph using the F key. Pressing F will reframe around selected keys or, if no keys are selected, reframe the entire clip. Parabolas, oh yes, quite possibly the most sexy thing to animate. Speaking of sexy, remember that class in high school where the physics teacher was droning on about the trajectory of a ball flying through the air, blah, blah, blah. Finally, we'll get to put some of that information to use. Let's pretend that the head is fired out of a cannon. We can say the head travels both horizontally and upwards. Plotting its horizontal path on a graph against time, we get a curve that looks like this. We can see that the curve is diagonal and straight, which equates to constant motion. Plotting the vertical path against time, it will look like this. As the head travels upwards, it is of course countered by gravity, eventually reaching an apex before it comes crashing down again. Now that we know what these curves look like, let's have a go at creating this motion. We'll begin by plotting the keys at the extremities of the motion. In this case, key A and key E. Then we'll go back and plot the in-between positions. We'll begin by loading the heavy's root transform control into the graph editor. To find it, Go to the Animation Set Editor and look for Heavy Bot Head. Click on the plus sign next to him to open up his hierarchy. And click on the plus sign next to Body and find Root Transform Control. Go ahead and select it. While Root Transform is selected, all its animatable attributes are listed here in the Graph Editor Outliner. Each of these animatable attributes are called channels and each channel has a curve. To frame all the curves, select Root Transform in the Graph Editor Outliner and press the F key to frame them. By default, these curves are flat, indicating that there's no motion at all for that channel. Now that Root Transform has been loaded in the Graph Editor, let's plot key A on frame 10. Set the playhead to frame 10 by left-clicking on 10 on the Graph Editor number bar. And with Root Transform selected, press the M hotkey. The M key will create a key for all curves in the graph editor and are represented by these black dots. Notice also that a bookmark is generated. We'll use the bookmarks later to help us select keys and frame the selected keys in the graph editor. Now that we've told the graph editor to pin down the position at frame 10, let's figure out which frame to pin the second position down to. Relative to frame 10, the head has traveled in a constant velocity along the x-axis for 40 frames. That's 1.6 seconds from normal people. This will take us out to frame 50. So what are we waiting for? Set the playhead to frame 50 by left-clicking 50 in the graph editor number bar. Of course, the next step is to move the head down the x-axis, but before we do, let's set a key on all the curves. With root transform selected, create a key by pressing M. Though we could have created this key after we've moved the head, in practice, it's safer to set a key before we move, so that way we won't forget to do it later. Okay, now let's move the head. Select the Translate Manipulator icon to switch to the Translate Manipulator. And hover the mouse over the red axis 
so that it turns yellow. Left click drag it to the right so that the head moves away from the spy. Notice that a transform path has been generated between the two keys, describing the path of the head as it moves through space. Let's see what happened in the graph editor. We can see that there is a diagonal red curve. This curve is the position X curve. When we move the head along the X axis at frame 50, it generated a new value for the position X key. The graph has drawn a straight curve between the two keys, filling in all the values in between. Now let's review the animation using the control spacebar command. Control spacebar will play the animation from the start of the clip to the end, and then return the playhead to its original position. You can stop playback at any time using the spacebar. Exciting! The head moves in a straight line. A straight diagonal curve like this equates to the head traveling at a constant velocity. We can adjust the value of a key by moving the head in the viewport, or we can adjust the value of a key by altering it in the graph editor. Let's try this out. With the playhead set to frame 50, select the key on frame 50 by left clicking on it. Holding down shift, middle mouse drag up or down. Amazing! The head moves accordingly. Go ahead and position the head so that its position x value is roughly negative 120. This white number here on the left of the graph can be used as a guide. Later we'll alter the shape of curves by moving keys around in this way. It's a handy way to shape the motion we're after. Now let's create a key for the apex of the bounce. We can see that relative to the other two keys, the apex is halfway in between and much higher. To find this halfway position between our first two keys, just set the playhead halfway between A and D. Left click drag the playhead so that it sits on frame 30. Because the graph is interpolated between the first two keys, we can get the in-between position for free. Just as before, set a key prior to moving the head. With root transform selected, press M, and like before, keys have been created for all curves. To move the head up, we'll want to left click drag the blue Z axis up so that the head is roughly twice the spy's height. The transform path now looks like a parabola. So let's play back what we have. Review the animation using the control spacebar command. Remember, stop playback at any time using the spacebar. The head rises and falls across a distance. Not bad for only having plotted three positions. Let's take a look at how this has affected the graph editor. Select position X and Z in the graph editor outliner by clicking on position X then control clicking on position Z, and press F. Setting the head in the new position on frame 30 has created a new key for position Z, and a smooth curve has been drawn through all three position Z values. This is because by default, the graph editor is set to spline interpolation. Spline interpolation will draw a smooth curve through the keys, creating smooth flowy motion. Because the head was moved in position Z only, it has not affected the position X curve. A curvy curve such as this one equates to motion that is accelerating and decelerating. The head travels up in the z-axis, decelerates, then travels down in the z-axis, picking up speed as it goes. This motion might be good enough for some animators, but we can do one better. Our head would probably feel better if we added more hang time when the head is in midair. As the head is traveling upwards, the rate in which the head decelerates is determined by gravity. And of course, the acceleration as it falls is also determined by gravity. Compared to this curve, a gravity curve will decelerate over a longer period at the apex and accelerate quicker as it falls. We'll change the rate of acceleration by adding additional keys to alter the shape of the curve. Keys B and D from our example. Set the playhead to frame 20 and drag the Z axis up so that it's a little closer to the apex. Notice that the dots on the line bunch up together more at the top, indicating that the head spends a bit more time decelerating in this area and less time as it rises. Now let's make this curve symmetrical. Unless the object is powered, generally the velocity at which an object travels upwards will mirror the velocity as it travels down. 
We'll do this by copying the newly created key from frame 20 to frame 40. In the graph editor, left click select the new key on frame 20 and press Ctrl C to copy. Set the playhead to frame 40 and press Ctrl V to paste. Play the animation with Ctrl spacebar. Now the head has a bit more hang time in the air. Having something hang in the air helps create that anticipation we all feel when we're about to fall. So we could leave it there, or we can man up and make the head bounce. Creating the second parabola will be exactly like creating the first, with one exception. Because the head loses energy when it hits the ground, it will of course not travel as high the second time around. The head still travels with the same velocity in X, but because it does not bounce as high, it will be in the air for less time, and therefore not travel as far in X. So let's get to it. Lucky for us, the start of the bounce, which is key E, has already been created at frame 50. So let's go ahead and key the position of when the second bounce lands. Key I, 20 frames later, at frame 70. Set the playhead to frame 70. And set a key before we move by selecting Root Transform and pressing the M hotkey. In the viewport, drag the red X axis to the right. The velocity of position X should be constant throughout. Let's double check that it is in the graph editor. In the graph editor outliner, select the position X curve and press F. Wait a second. The curve is supposed to be straight, not kinky. Let's straighten this out by adjusting the key at frame 70 vertically. To adjust the vertical value of the key, left click select the key on frame 70, hold down shift, and middle mouse drag up or down until a straight line is formed. Done. Now we'll create the apex of the second parabola, key G. Just like before, we'll set the head in between the keys on frames 50 and 70, then drag the head up in the z-axis. Set the playhead to frame 60, select root transform, and in the viewport, drag the blue z-axis about a third of the way up the height of the last bounce. We could try halfway up or a quarter of the way up, but a third of the height feels about right for this exercise. Try playing the animation. What was that? That's no bounce. What's going wrong here? Let's see what's happening in the graph editor. Frame the graph so that the position Z curve is easier to see. Select position Z and press F. At frame 50, the position Z curve interpolates smoothly through this point, resulting in the head moving softly instead of bouncing hard. Currently, the graph editor is set to draw a spline interpolation through all points. To make the bounce hard, will tell the graph editor to interpolate linearly in and out of this key. Linear interpolation draws a straight curve from key to key, resulting in motion that is constant, but changes abruptly. Left click select the key at frame 50, and select the Linear Tangent button. Now the curve is sharp coming in and out of this point. Playing the animation, the bounce now feels sharp. Nice. Just as before, give the bounce a bit more hang time. Set the playhead in between keys E and G and move the head up slightly. Copy this key and paste in between keys G and I. Play the animation with Control Spacebar. Lesser animators would say good enough. Let's just take it one step further and give it that one extra bounce before it loses momentum entirely. Creating a third parabola should be no surprise. Like the last parabola, it will have lost energy from hitting the ground, so it won't bounce as high. Go ahead and reframe the graph so that all curves are visible by selecting Root Transform and pressing F. Set the playhead to frame 80. Set a key before we move by pressing the M hotkey. Move the head further along in space by selecting the X axis in the viewport and left click dragging it to the right. Let's reframe the graph editor to see the position X curve. 
Select position X and press F. Again, kinky curve. Adjust the curve so that the head travels at a constant velocity by left click selecting the key on frame 80, hold down shift and middle mouse drag it up or down until the curve is straight. And to create the apex of the third bounce, set the playhead to frame 75. With root transform selected, drag the Z axis up a quarter of the distance of the last bounce. Again the bounce is soft. It's that interpolation again. Let's make a harder bounce. View the position Z curve in the graph editor by selecting position Z and pressing F. Select the position Z key at frame 70 and click on the linear tangent button. Now both bounces are linear and sharp. And while we're making linear tangents, let's make the position Z key at frame 80 linear as well. Later, when we make the head decelerate, this will keep the head from going into the ground. Trust me. Select the position Z key at frame 80 and click on the linear tangent button. And like the last two parabolas, create hang time by moving the head a little higher between the bounce and the apex. And mirror this key by copying and pasting it on the other side of the curve. Play the animation. Totally worth it. Currently, the head stops abruptly at frame 80. In the real world, nothing just stops. Let's have the head start to decelerate at frame 80 and come to a gradual stop at frame 90. Before we move the head, let's set a key for all curves on frame 90. Go ahead and set the playhead to frame 90 with root transform selected and press the M hotkey. Go ahead and reframe the graph so that all curves are visible by selecting root transform and pressing F. Now let's move the head a little to give them some distance to slow down. Select the x-axis in the viewport and drag the head a little to the right. Let's see what's happening to the position of the x-curve in the graph editor. Select position next from the graph editor outliner and press F. You can see that the curve is diagonal and straight, which equates to constant motion. Then the curve abruptly becomes horizontal, which equates to no motion at all. For the head to decelerate, the curve will need to change smoothly from diagonal to horizontal. To create the gradual stop, we'll tell this key to use flat interpolation. Flat interpolation basically flattens out the curve at the key, creating motion that gradually changes from diagonal to horizontal. Select the key at frame 90 and select the flat interpolation icon. Now the curve gradually changes from diagonal to horizontal. Let's adjust the curve so that the motion preceding frame 90 flows gradually into it. With the key on frame 90 selected, hold down shift and middle mouse drag it vertically. Play the animation. Now the head travels at a constant velocity along the x-axis until frame 80. Then it decelerates to a stop. It's no good just having the head flying perfectly rigid through space. It's rather dull when it comes to streaming particle blood, or in this case oil. Nothing like a little spin to get a nice spatter effect. So let's go the extra mile. We'll create the spin in the graph editor by setting a key on frame 90 on the rotation Y curve, then moving the value of the key in the graph editor. Let's reframe the graph so that all curves are visible. Select root transform and press F. Set the playhead to frame 90. Now select rotation Y so that it's the only curve visible. Notice that the curve is flat, which equates to no rotation. Go ahead and move the key at frame 90 by selecting it and shift middle mouse dragging it down. The head starts to spin, but not nearly enough. We'll need to make room in the graph. To zoom out on the vertical axis, hold down control and use the scroll wheel. Continue to scroll wheel until the range of values goes from about negative 1000 to plus 1000. This will give us plenty of room to move the key. And if necessary, center the curve using Alt and middle mouse drag. 
Next, we'll move the rotation Y key at frame 90. With the key selected, shift the middle mouse button drag down so that the key travels down the graph. Continue to move the key down until the rotation Y value is at roughly negative 760 degrees. If you play the animation, you'll see that the head only turns towards the end of the motion. If you look at the graph, notice that the curve is flat until frame 80, and then all the change in motion occurs between 80 and 90. We need the blood spatter for the entire animation, not just the end. To create continuous rotation across the entire animation, we'll need to make the curve go into a straight line from 0 to 90. We'll do this by deleting the keys that are pinning the curve in place. Hover the mouse adjacent to the leftmost key to be deleted, and box select the keys from frames 30 to 80 by left click dragging across them. Press delete to blow them away. Now a straight line has been created from beginning to end, making the rotation constant from start to finish. Play the animation. The head now rotates at a constant speed between frames 10 and 90. Nice. Congratulations! We've successfully completed the most basic animation exercise taught to all animators. It's a variation of what's known as the bouncing ball exercise, which has been a time-honored way to get students of animation to think through some basic animation problems. But generally speaking, we're not going to be animating a lot of balls. Let's take this animation and use it for something useful, like blowing away robots. First we'll make the robot body visible, then we'll transplant the head on it. To unhide the body, look for bot underscore heavy in the animation set editor, and select the grayed out eye icon next to it. The heavy bot will appear in the viewport. Unfortunately, our head's not close enough to the body. Looks like we'll have to reposition the animated head so that it sits on the body. First, let's determine how high the head should be. Scrub the playhead until the head sits approximately at head height. Though the head now sits at the correct height, sadly, it's not close enough in position X. There is a way we can move the entire animation closer. We'll do this by selecting all the keys for the position X curve and moving them all vertically at the same time. View just the position X curve in the graph editor by selecting it in the graph editor outliner. And reframe it by pressing F. To select all the position X keys, select the position X curve in the graph not the keys, just the curve. Now all the keys for that curve have been selected. With all keys selected, hold down shift and middle mouse drag vertically up or down so that the entire curve moves vertically in the graph editor. Though the relative values for each key is changing, the curve remains intact, in effect, preserving the animation. Move the curve so that the head is over the shoulders of bot heavy. This position will be the new start position for the head. But wait, the animation still starts from the ground. That doesn't look right. This problem is completely fixable. Here's what we'll do. Let's create a key at the new start frame, then delete all the keys that come before it. First, let's set a key for this new position. Reframe the graph editor so that all curves are visible by selecting root transform and pressing F. With the head at the new position, press M. Keys have now been created for all channels. Keep the head still up to this point by deleting keys previous to this point. Left click drag around them to box select them and press delete. Now the curve up to the new starting point is flat which equates to no motion. Play the animation. Great, that is, great if the heavy was supposed to look straight up at the sky. Let's fix the head rotation so that he's looking straight at the spy. Set the play head at the new starting frame and select the Rotate Manipulator icon, and rotate the head using the blue outer ring. Play the animation. Great job, guys. High fives all around. Oh, darn it. The head animation isn't synced to the spy's gun. I suppose it would be nice if the head popped up when the gun shoots. Hmm. Oh, I know. We'll do this by selecting all the keys for all the channels 
and moving them horizontally to a different point in time. Scrub in time to the point where the spy shoots, in this case, around frame 45. This will become our new start frame for the head animation. And with Root Transform selected, left click on the first bookmark in the timeline. Notice that all the keys on that frame are selected. To select all the keys for all the curves, hold down Shift and select the very last bookmark. Now all the keys have been selected. To move all the curves in time, hold down Shift and middle mouse drag horizontally in the timeline. The playhead does not move as we're still at that same point in time. What is changing is the position of the head at that time. Slide the key so that the start position falls on the playhead. And play the animation. The animation plays later in time and is preserved. Wow, that was epic. Epically teeth pulling, but worth it for the next part of this pose to pose animation series. To sum up, we've learned how to navigate around the graph editor and frame curves, learned how to create keys and edit their values, we've examined some different ways to interpolate between keys. Try experimenting with how the head moves by changing the positions of the keys in the graph editor, both in time and space. We'll take all this knowledge we learned today and use it to create in between motion for the spy shooting. So thanks very much, and oh, hang on, we forgot to make the rest of the set visible. And hiding the set is just a matter of clicking on this grayed out eye symbol next to set. Go ahead and try it out. Voila. Oh, looks a little bit different than expected. We'll need to switch cameras. To do this, select the plus icon next to camera and open up its hierarchy. Left click drag, camera underscore scene into the viewport. Okay, somewhat better. To make it prettier, let's unhide the lights by selecting the eye symbol next to lights. And one final thing, let's make the animation loopable by extending the length of the clip so that it's 231 frames long. We'll need to go into the clip editor to do this. Enter the clip editor by selecting the clip editor icon in the upper left of the timeline window. Let's zoom out the timeline using the scroll wheel. Scroll wheel down so that the right edge of the timeline extends beyond frame 231. Once that's done, hover the mouse over the right edge of the blue film strip so that the bracket icon appears. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the edge of the clip until it's 231 frames long. This will extend the range of our movie, but not the range of the clip. To extend the range of the clip, hover the mouse over the right edge of the clip so that the bracket icon appears. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the edge of the clip until it's also 231 frames long. Use this number to guide you. And there we have it. Thanks again.